Once upon a time, there was a couple named Lucas and Mercy. They had been married for many years without a child. Lucas's mother was against him marrying Mercy because according to her, Mercy was a city girl. She wanted Lucas to marry a girl from the village which she had earlier introduced to her son. But Lucas refused and insisted on marrying Mercy. One day, when Lucas's mother visited and found out that Mercy was still not pregnant after many years of their marriage, this made her very disappointed and angry and she began to scold her son. I told you not to marry from the city. You insisted. Now see the results. City girls have spoiled their wombs with abortion. I'm not getting any younger. You have been married to this girl that has no womb for years now without a child. If only you had listened to me. I found you a nice girl from the village and you insisted on marrying that thing there that you called a wife. The lady I found for you then is married with three kids. Here you are without one. But it's not too late. I can actually get you someone again from the village to carry your baby. I'll only come back here if you change your mind. His mom said as she stormed out of his house. Mercy came out of her room crying. What have I done to deserve this insult from mom? I'm no God that gives children. You have gone for medical checkup and we were proving okay. What more should I do? She asked as tears dropped more and more from her cheeks. Just go ahead and get a second wife. If that is what will make her happy. Missy said as she ran into her room with tears. Lucas was tired already. Those he got married before them were already with children. And there he was without a child. He was the only child of his parents. His father was late and now his mother was on his neck to get married to another woman so she can see her grandchildren before she dies. Here is his wife whom he loves so much and doesn't want to hurt by bringing in another woman. At this point, he didn't even know the way forward. I've always warned you that it will come to this. I told you what to do, but you never listened. You said you love your husband so much and you're a Christian. Watch and see if your husband will not marry a second wife. I'll repeat myself again. You have two options here, Messi. Get yourself a man to sleep with you and confirm if this problem is not from your husband. Or I will take you to a native doctor that will help you get pregnant. It's your choice to make, oh. I've done my part as a good friend. Stop waiting on a God that does not exist. <laughs> Alice concluded. Alice was Macy's friend, who was a few years older than her and a mother of two. That night, Macy couldn't sleep. She kept on thinking about the advice that Alice gave her. Now she was beginning to doubt if God existed. Is it better to go to the native doctor or cheat on her husband with a random guy? What if she cheats and doesn't get pregnant? Yet how will she know if she doesn't try? The stigma of being called barren became heavier on Macy. She would see fingers pointing at her when she walked past public places. She had prayed, she had fasted, and it seemed like God wasn't there. Now her mother-in-law was even about to get her husband another wife. I know my husband loves me a lot, but till when? Macy would always ask herself, if I decide to have an affair outside my marriage, Without my husband's concern, how will he feel when he finds out I've betrayed him? 
Now, she decided that the only decision was the native doctor. She went to see Alice, who took her to the native doctor's place. He told her that he is a baby giver and her troubles were over. Take this and drink for three days and you become pregnant. You give birth to a baby boy, he said. But there is a price to pay, he told Mercy. But you won't be told until the child is born. Mercy was not interested in knowing the price she would pay. She was just so happy that she finally would be able to carry a baby. She dropped the money she came with and left with Alice. Two weeks later, Macy was confirmed pregnant. She was overwhelmed. She never believed she would be ever pregnant again as she had lost all hope. Lucas called his mother, who had earlier said that Mercy had destroyed her womb, to tell her that his wife was pregnant. She was so happy and she apologized to Mercy over the phone, calling her sweet names. Mercy called Alice and thanked her for bringing happiness into her life. Now you see the reason with me that God does not exist. What he couldn't do, Baba did it sharp sharp. And remember not to tell anyone the source of your pregnancy. Alice reminded Mercy. It was nine months already and the set date for the delivery had come. Mercy gave birth swiftly and a baby boy just as the native doctor said. And she called him Ryan. Ryan was born handsome. His hair was curly, his eyes charming and his color was radiating. He was so cute that everyone who saw him wished to give birth to a baby like him. Alice rushed down to the hospital immediately. The child was born. She came bearing a message from Baba. Kill your mother-in-law or the baby will die at the age of two. That is what Baba said. Alice was shocked. But Baba didn't tell her it was a life for a life. How can she bring herself to kill her mother-in-law? Here is the scarf. Just put it in your mother-in-law's bag when she's going and make sure she doesn't see it. She will die when she arrives at the village. Why are you feeling sorry for her? I hope you have not forgotten how she made you feel. Make your choice, your mother-in-law or your baby, Alice said as she left the hospital. Lucas's mom came from the village the very next day after Macy gave birth. She went ahead to plead with Macy to forgive her once again for calling her barren. Few days later, after they had been discharged from the hospital, Macy's mother-in-law was about to bait Ryan in the morning when he called her grandma with a smile. That was the shock of her life. She yelled out at Macy, who came running to the scene. What happened, Mama? She asked. She was silent for a while, then said nothing. She couldn't bring herself to tell Mercy that her few days old baby called her grandma. Maybe it was just her imagination. Mrs. Ikena, Lucas's mom, kept trying again to see if what she had was real. On a Sunday evening, Macy had just gone to get something down the street. Mrs. Ikena heard the cry of Ryan and went in to carry him. On arrival, she met him crawling around on the bed. She couldn't hold back anymore. She called out for Lucas to come and behold what she saw. But on getting there, Ryan was sleeping peacefully. She told Lucas about the first incident. Lucas tried to convince her that she was getting old and maybe it was just a figment of her imagination. Just then, 
Macy walked in. Her husband told her what his mother said. Mercy told her mother-in-law that she wasn't happy for her to have had such imaginations about her sweet little baby who was barely two weeks old. I knew it, Mama. You never believed I can be a mother. Now you are saying things that don't exist. Mama, if you are tired, go back to the village. Macy said to her mother-in-law in an appropriate tune. She remembered she had to put the scarf in her mother-in-law's bag without her knowing and she can only do that if they are in good terms. So she apologized to her mother-in-law for being rude. Carrying the baby, Macy began to think within herself. I know what I passed through when I was still barren. All the insults and humiliations from people, especially my fellow women. All I went through just to get this baby. I can't cut my joy when he turns two years old. At this point, I don't think I have any other option. Hello, sir. Your warehouse is on fire. It is burning vehemently, and we are still looking for a way to put it out. The time was 2.30 a.m. in the morning, and that was the call that woke Mr. Lucas up. He rushed out with his car to get to the scene only to discover that his warehouse and the goods within had been burned down to ashes. Lucas cried his eyes out. He was so pained in his heart, he had just lost millions of Naira. The incident brought the pastor and some members of their church to his house who came to sympathize with him. On their arrival, Macy didn't allow anyone to carry or touch her baby. She told them all that he was sleeping. His pastor told him that what happened wasn't ordinary and that he could feel it. He prayed for the family, excluding baby Ryan who was inside. He suggested to go and pray for him inside, which Macy didn't give permission to with the excuse that he would wake up at the slightest touch and that he wasn't feeling too well. When they were about to leave, Pastor Russell called Mrs. Ikena aside. He had a message for her. Ma, the revelation is not clear, but you need to apologize to your daughter-in-law, then stay here for a while. Don't go back to the village just yet. Something bad is looming around. But I've already apologized to her pastor, and we are in good terms, Mrs. Ikena affirmed. And the period of the Omugo is almost over, she added. But there's something about this baby that it seems I'm the only one seeing it. And then she went ahead to narrate all she saw to the pastor. Just do as I've told you. Go ahead and apologize again. Also, suspend your travel for now. The enemy has entered this family, he said, as he prayed for her before leaving. Mrs. Ikenna went straight to Macy after the pastor left. My daughter, I know I have wronged you. If only I had put myself in your shoes and showered you with love instead of scorn, I know your heart wouldn't be bad towards me. I was supposed to be your mother since your own mother is dead. I was supposed to be your backbone, but instead I chose to be selfish. How could I choose to tell my son to marry a second wife? How could I have been mean to have called you barren? I even said, that you spoilt your womb when my son stayed you stood by him when he had nothing but now you have proven me wrong by carrying a baby and giving birth to him safely i am deeply sorry from the depth of my heart my dear i ask that you find a place in your heart to forgive me 
Bisisikena said as tears rolled down her cheeks. Macy too started crying. If only her mother-in-law had encouraged her, she wouldn't have gone to the native doctor. She would have waited on the Lord that gives children without asking for a life. Now I've been committed to this. After all my struggles, I can't even bring myself to kill her anymore and I can't lose my baby. Macy thought to herself. She was in a deep dilemma. Walking up and down inside her room with tears in her eyes, Macy had gotten to the crossroads and she didn't know which way seemed right anymore. She decided to call her friend Alice and seek advice. Alice advised her to look past the tears of her mother-in-law. She's just pretending. It is trying times that show the true color of a person. When you couldn't bear a child, she showed you her true color. Now that Baba has given you a child, she's asking for forgiveness. Do what Baba has asked you, except you want to lose your baby. Your mother-in-law will die in a few years' time anyways. But it is Ryan that will look after you when you become old. At his stance now, you have nobody else. You are the only child of your parents that are no more. You better do what is best for your future. And as for your husband's warehouse that was burnt down, and that so-called pastor told you that there's evil in your house, don't mind him. Misfortunes happen at times. It's not everything that is evil. They just want your money. Alice's advice added more confusion into the head of the already confused Macy. Who could be right? Her conscience was telling her to let her mother-in-law live. But her selfishness was telling her to let her baby live. At night, as they were sleeping, Lucas heard a noise in the living room. He stood up and went to the living room only to see his baby Ryan sitting comfortably on his cushion chair, staring at him, smiling. He got scared. It must be a dream, he said to himself. He cleaned his eyes and the baby called him, Daddy. He quickly ran into his room to call his wife to see what he just saw. When she woke up and switched on the lights, Ryan was inside his cot sleeping like a baby that he was. They both went to the living room, but no one was there. In the morning, Lucas began to think about the times his mother told him about some strange behaviors Ryan exhibited that he had doubted. Is he also imagining things just like his mom? He carried Ryan and expected to see or hear something strange, yet nothing happened. He was just looking so sweet and innocent. Few weeks later, Lucas fell seriously sick. Most of what he had left was sold, including his car, just to care for his health. He was taken from one hospital to another but none of them were able to diagnose what was really wrong with him. Alice came to visit Mercy at the hospital where she was with her husband. She called her aside and said to her, You are stubborn and that will cost you a lot. Baba asked you to kill your mother-in-law since the baby was born and you couldn't. Now the spirits have started coming for other things. Better look for a way to send your mother-in-law back to the village so she will die and your husband will be okay. You will live your dream life with your husband and your baby. I love you so much, mommy. I know you love me too. And you did all this just to have me. Do you want me to die before I turn to? I've always waited for you to bring me into this world. Now I am here. Will you allow me to die? Baby Ryan said with tears in his eyes. See, Daddy is slowly dying. 
Do you want him to die too? You know what to do, mommy. Baba is hungry. All you have to do is feed him and then everything will be okay. Ryan was crying and walking towards his mother. Mercy was filled with fear. She couldn't stand the fact that her few months old baby was talking and walking towards her. She screamed and her mother-in-law came running towards her. Mercy got up immediately, holding her heart. It was just a dream. And she woke Ryan up with her screams, which made him to start crying. This time she got scared. Could it be that her husband and mother-in-law were actually saying the truth about what they saw? No, it can't be, she said to herself. It was just a dream, and he's her baby. Mrs. Ikena asked her what the dream was all about that had made her to scream out loud. But she didn't have any answer to give. She just told her that it was a very bad dream and that she didn't want to talk about it. Mrs. Ikena, who had not left ever since she came for the Omogo, following the instructions of the pastor, walked out of the room, leaving her alone with Ryan. Was it Baba that sent Ryan to her dreams? Macy began to analyze. But since I've been waiting on God, nothing bad had happened to my family. My husband is the type that doesn't fall sick. But now, all of a sudden, he has a sickness that can't be diagnosed. I've seen women that waited on God and later gave birth to triplets at a time. Why didn't I adopt a child and keep waiting on God? Oh God, why didn't the thought of adopting a child come to me earlier? I would have still had my peace of mind, even while waiting on God. And now I have a baby with so many costs to bear. We've almost gone bankrupt. We just have our house left. My husband is fighting for his life. And the sickness doesn't even have any name. All my life, I haven't killed anyone. And Baba is asking me to kill my mother-in-law who has replaced the role of a mother in my life. Even though my mother-in-law pushed me this hard, but she has asked for forgiveness. And I understand the way she felt because she wanted to see her grandchildren before she passed away. Now there's Alice, my friend who has pushed me into all this. Does it mean that Alice also soiled her hand to get her children? How can she not really see the depth of problems that I am into? Will killing my mother-in-law solve all these problems? What if Baba asks more from me? What else can I give? What if he finally takes everything and even the baby? A lot of questions are going on in my mind, but who will give answers to them? If I run back to God, won't I lose my baby? Can the pastor really deliver my family? Will God even be able to forgive me? Missy picked up her phone with two options in her mind. Should she call Alice and ask her to take her to Baba and get some answers to her questions? Or should she call Pastor Russell and confess how she got her baby? She dialed Alice's number. The network seemed to be disturbing as the call didn't go through. She tried and tried severally but the number didn't connect. Maybe God was really trying to tell her to call Pastor Russell, she thought to herself. But then, why won't Alice's number go through? This was the first time it has ever happened. And at this critical time, I really need to find out what is going on with my friend. I don't think everything is all right. Mercy said out loud as she left Ryan with her mother-in-law and went off to Alice's place. She got to Alice's house and she wasn't around. Her neighbor told her that Alice's first child was knocked down by a car 
and he died on their way to the hospital. Maybe she lost her phone in the process of going to the scene and taking the child to the hospital. Mercy rushed down to the indicated hospital to go and see her friend and her dead child. Alice pushed her away, telling her she's the cause of her problems. Go away. Go away from here, you stubborn woman. With all that has been falling you, you couldn't do a simple assignment and live your life. Now see what your stupidity has cost me. You are so selfish. Go away from here, please. Alice said, sobbing like a baby. She had lost her friend too, Missy asked herself. It seemed like she had gotten to the end of the road. Not knowing what else to do, Missy went home crying. Mrs. Ikena came in and met her crying. She came closer to her and consoled her. You see, my daughter, I think we need to go and see the pastor. Let him pray for us, especially you and give you words of encouragement. But how will I face God, Mama? <laughs> Don't worry. Let's go to him. He's a merciful God. No matter what you think you've done, he will forgive you. After a little persuasion, Macy dressed Ryan and left for church with her mother-in-law. They went to see the pastor in his office. Macy couldn't find the courage, but somehow it came to her. I want to confess, Pastor. Although it wasn't intentional, people pushed me to this. This baby is from a native doctor, and I was asked to kill my mother-in-law for him to be alive. But I couldn't bring myself to do it after she apologized to me. I think that is why all these things are happening to me and my husband. Mrs. Ikena was stunned by what she heard and she thanked God that she listened to the pastor and apologized. At first, Ryan was so sweet and innocent till the pastor tried to carry him. His face suddenly changed to that of an old man. He stood on his legs and challenged the pastor, telling him to allow him finish the work he started in Lucas's family or else he would kill him. Pastor Russell prayed and prayed, and Ryan fell on his face and came back. Ryan started crying. Mercy refused to carry him, saying he was from the devil. But Pastor Russell told him confidently to carry her baby that he had been delivered. Mercy, listen carefully. The pastor said, The devil never gave you this child. God had already answered your prayers. You were already pregnant before you went to see the native doctor. He just gave you that drink and possessed Ryan. Can't you see how beautiful your baby is? Can the devil give you something this nice? They were still at the pastor's office when a call came in. It was Lucas who was calling. Where are you? He asked Macy. We are at the church. We went to meet the pastor. Macy answered. Oh, my dear, help me thank God though. I am healed. Every scar and spot has disappeared miraculously. Macy and her mother-in-law and the pastor all gave thanks to God. After all this happened, Macy thought to herself, patience is virtue. When waiting on God, if only I was patient with God and didn't listen to what we were saying, I wouldn't have had to go through all this. I will also have to choose well who I call my friend from now on because nothing from the devil comes without a price. Oh, glory to God. My baby is now mine without a price.
thank you so much for watching and please do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel if you enjoyed this story give it a thumbs up comment and share thank you and god bless you